approach the subject of the of the deficit in central in the central booking budget for 2014 uh, is a hundred and forty thousand dollar deficit and um, engage the municipalities to come up with some type of a funding solution uh, or alternatively some cutbacks in the in the actual service that central bookings provides doing that by budgeting for uh, two th budgeting the full budget for central booking operation for this first six months of 2014 and for two-thirds of it for the second six, six months of 2014 in hopes that the municipalities uh, would be willing to pay a portion of the cost of operation based on the numbers of arrests that are in their municipalities broken down. Um, there was a survey sent out in February to all the municipalities asking if they would be willing to support that uh, or not. It came back rather mixed, but the, the consensus among them was they need some more information. That you know, Just asking them yes or no isn't something they could answer readily. So there was a meeting held April 30th with all the municipalities invited. Uh, many of the police departments were there, district attorney, probation, uh, detectives, and so on the users. That was an hour, hour and a half of a forum for them to ask questions and uh, get some answers back to them. And then about three weeks ago, another survey was sent out as a final survey for them to indicate their willingness. And we received from those survey, from that send out, the ones we sent out, we received 19 responses. Uh, we're still missing uh, six of them, I guess it would be, or five of them. Six of Six. Them. Yeah. Um, essentially, 14 of the municipalities indicated that they would be willing to support that proposal. Five of them indicated they would not. Some of those that indicated they would sent back with conditions. Some of those conditions being that as long as, for example, North Londonderry said, as long as 100% of the municipalities are going to participate, they would be willing to. The assumption is if it's not 100%, then, then they change to a no. So uh, they weren't the only ones to say that. So uh, those surveys were provided to you. Uh, we did not get a response from, although, and, and I might add, uh, some of the, we didn't get a, an official response from, but there was some news coverage in some cases that gave you an indication of how they felt. So uh, that filled in a few of the gaps. But we did not hear from Cornwall Borough, Heidelberg Township, Lebanon City, Mount Gretna Borough, North Cornwall Township, or Richland Borough, but I did include at least one article, I think, uh, that was covered for North Cornwall. So they're assumed those. Well, I gave you some feedback. On the Except maybe yeah. the city. Yeah. That, that might yeah. be the only one. Yeah, there have been some other conversations, I, I guess, that you may have individually, personally had with members of municipalities that uh, you know, I can't account for in here. Yeah. But, but I wouldn't want to assume those. Yeah. <clears throat> so, um, you know, with that, District Attorney Arnold and, and Detective Chief Detective Leahy are here. If, I guess if there's any input you seek from them, um, but at this point, then it's uh, it's ripe for your consideration, I guess, on how to proceed with this. Gentlemen, is there anything you'd like to add to the study? I have nothing to add to the study. I mean, I, I'm I'm disappointed that we're at this point. I, I'm disappointed that the municipalities, uh, you know, don't don't see the value in what's being provided to them and, and to their police officers. Um, but, you know, I, I, I hope the facility stays open 24-7. Um, I also understand the realities of where we're at and respect the decisions that you have to make. So, uh, like I said, it's just disappointing that we're here. Okay, I'd like to review a little bit um, what got us to this point. Ten years, I want to say ten years ago, it was... Um, I don't remember the exact year we started this program. It was when Deidre Eshelman was the district attorney. And the promise at that time would be that all the costs would be covered. And indeed, we're charging a $300 fee to help cover the cost. And the total fees charged have been over $4 million to date. Unfortunately, according to Jamie's response to a Mr. Wolf some time back, 70% or $2,800,000 in paid. Well, it's uh, cumulative. Sometimes it's they're slow paying. But one of the biggest thing is that
the county is 17th on the list to get reimbursed for their expenses. The state um, has put themselves first and um, therefore we also know that some of those fees will never be collected because you can't get blood from a turnip. And again, I'm quoting Mr. Wolgamuth. I just mentioned, I think it's, it's you have that reverse, 70% was collected. There's 30%, 2.8 million of the 4 million was okay. collected. Okay, <laughs> and the percentage of the general fund was a question that was asked, it's 0.03% um, and the highest fines and cost collections that we charge um, we, we've been doing so well that other counties have come here calling us having best practices on how we do it and they've studied our system that was Dauphin, Lancaster, York and Chester who visited, who visited us and of course there's always room for improvement but we have done everything humanly possible to collect more but by law we can't go higher than the $300 and we're still coming up short to the tune of $140,000 a year. And of that fee, um, the proposal that was laid out, the county would still be paying $60,000 of that $140,000, and Jamie can correct me if I'm wrong. And then based on the number of arrests, the municipalities were asked to contribute a portion with a grand total of $80,000. Um, so, uh, because the, this is a service, this is not a mandated service, strictly a service that we were providing on the promise that it would be fully funded. So it has become an unfunded mandate on the county. That's how we got to this point. So all of that being said, um, is there any further discussion on anyone's behalf? I'd like to. Surely. Um, one of the things that came out of the meeting that uh, we had with the stakeholders was that to a person I think all agreed that it's a valuable service so that was it, it was a matter of who's going to pay for it um, and ultimately the taxpayer will pay for it it's just a matter of will it be on our back uh, as a county or will it be on the municipalities individually to deal with that um, public safety is one of the basic tenets of our office uh, of county commissioner and I I think um, Unfortunately, the pro to me, the process was flawed. I don't feel bound by having to break even um, as, because Deirdre said that 12 years ago or whatever it is. Um, I think the service is, is needed. Um, but I think it was flawed because we passed our budget after the municipalities passed theirs. So they uh, don't have budgeted this last six months of the year to pick up the uh, the deficit that we'd be passing on to them. I, I would consider um, a motion to fund the last six months from our cash reserve um, to give the municipalities more time to uh, deliberate this, to come to their senses that it is a good uh, thing that they should be supporting and maybe have some of the, uh, peer pressure put on the remaining few that have not stepped up. That would be uh, if we could fund it for six months and then we'd start the next year off as a, um, that would be an, an option. And I'd be willing to make an, a motion to that effect. There's a motion on the floor. Is there a second? I will second that motion with the opportunity. To... Please do. Uh, first of all, I, I can't uh, express enough my disappointment in the unwillingness of the uh, municipalities to step forward. And, uh, to speak to uh, Commissioner Phillips' suggestion that perhaps there will be peer pressure put on some of these communities. That was actually a criticism from the supervisors in North Anvil, or at least one of them, saying that uh, he was resentful toward the fact that the county commissioners pitted one municipality against another on this issue, which obviously is silly because that wasn't our intent. Our intent was to fund the central booking. Uh, as a, a person that's been in some kind of business my entire adult life, it's very frustrating to me to discover that uh, with the help of others I can't fix something. Because if this was a, an area, if, if I owned a central booking agency, and I was having trouble making it profitable, I would do everything. 
as also as Commissioner Phillips said, we have a responsibility for the safety of all the, the residents that live in this county. And I, I certainly do not want to do anything that jeopardizes that. Uh, so I guess essentially what Commissioner Phillips' motion does, uh, and I second it, it is to, to buy us some time and continue to work on a solution. And I'm making the plea to you folks as well to help us find that solution because I am not willing. Some of the accusations that were made by township supervisors, uh, one pitting one municipality against another is ridiculous. Another comment was that it's 140,000. We have approximately 70,000 residents. That's not a very big tax, $2 per resident. These people don't understand county government, I suppose, because we have no taxing power to go out and tax each person in the county $2. That's not within our jurisdiction. We can't tax. The only thing we have the right to tax is property, real estate. So to make that accusation that, hey, you guys should pass a $2 a head tax, which of course would be ridiculous in itself because it would cost more to administer than you would collect. So again, I make the plea and I made that same plea at the meeting, but obviously it fell on some deaf ears for uh, camaraderie. Uh, let's work together, let's find a solution and I agree with it. You know, the taxpayers are going to pay in the end, but I still think we need to take a closer look at how we can manage the department and try to cut costs. And uh, I made a suggestion that we could cross train some of the sheriff's deputies to fill in when, it, rather than bringing someone back in on overtime. I know it wouldn't solve it all, but overtime's a big piece of it. Still remains to be. You have, John, you have fixed that to a degree after. You know, and I know you put a lot of effort in, but it's you know, substantially less at this point than it, is. it was last year. It is. And we track the overtime now. We're smart enough to do that, so we watch that. And you're to be commended because some areas are worse in the county. So uh, commend you on that. But you know, I I, I would uh, I don't want this to be interpreted this move as hey. The county's back down and they're going to fund this thing uh, going forward. I really want us now to communicate to them that we're not going to do that come the first of the year and that they do need to step up. They need to work, they, they need to work together. Uh, I would much rather have this as an appeal to them to solve this problem rather than yes or no. So with that, I'm done. I think the municipalities, I certainly understand that they're strapped just as we are, but I do know if we weren't doing this service, it would be fully on their nickel and their time as well. So uh, I'd like to also make it clear that we are not talking about getting rid of central booking per se, but cutting back on hours so that we can meet the budget. And um, I think it's important to remember that. And years ago, before the, my current colleagues were on board, John, you came to us with statistics that showed an average maybe of one or two people a night got processed. And to me, those numbers alone thought, I thought, well, that's kind of silly to have two guys sitting there or gals sitting there for eight hours doing the processing when that's all that's being processed. Um, so, uh, you know, to me, it made sense to look at eliminating the night shift. I also know that I took the opportunity to go down and uh, I wanted it to be unannounced, uh, which I understand I upset you, Mr. District Attorney, and I apologize for that. But I, I went down unannounced and I observed an actual booking. And I learned an awful lot. The young man who was there was very polite and knowledgeable. And he explained to me that sometimes people come in and they're drunk and they pass out and they cannot be processed immediately. So therefore, it's not an in and out like one would think. 
to me, it should have been like clockwork. They come in, they get processed, they're done in 15, 20 minutes. Um, and if they get sick, you know, it has to be cleaned up, whatever. So there's all these kinds of things that I learned by visiting the center. And so I have more of an apathy for what you're going through, and I want to point that out. But at the same token, I still, my responsibility as a commissioner is to balance the budget. I just appeal to you. I appeal to all the township supervisors and borough council people and mayors. Please work with us to help find a solution so that we can all put public safety first. Uh, that being said, there is a motion on the floor. Uh, it's been duly made and second. So if there's no further discussion, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. The project will be funded through the end of the year uh, with the understanding that we're looking for an, some sort of a, a resolution to be able to fund it into the future.